Hey everyone, welcome to Two Dice One Roll with Mousy Thunder. Today we're going to be doing a showcase of the Too Many Bones expansions. So we're going to do an unboxing of every expansion that is currently available uh, for the Too Many Bones series. The reason why I won't be doing an unboxing of the core game just yet is because I don't actually have a copy of it, as well as the premium health chips as they were all out of stock. Due to what's going on in the world currently, it's understandable that board games have kind of had a big influx in uh, popularity. So basically for this video, I will do a brief unboxing and showcase of uh, all the items that comes in each individual box. And I'll do that in different sections. So if there's one you're particular one to see, I'll put a timestamp and you can just skip to that one, see what's inside if it wants to inform your decision in buying. So uh, I hope you stick around. This is the very first video for this channel and I'll be doing many uh, unboxings and impressions, reviews, and playthroughs of many board games uh, going forward. So without further ado, uh, let's get right into it. So the first thing we shall unbox is one of the main reasons most people I assume will come to see this video is the Undertow expansion. I know these are older than what's currently going to be coming, so most people maybe would have seen these, but if you happen to stumble across my channel and you want to know what's inside, then please stick around and enjoy. So first of all, I'll flip it over. And we'll have a brief overview of the back of the box. And it says here, the seven tyrants have been defeated. You'd think the Gearlock Council would be satisfied, but it seems there's a dark current running beneath Daylor. Duster, previously accused of being a tyrant, must work with her new companion Stanza to head down the Cybor Cybron River in search of help, answers, and the means to expose and defeat the council. Welcome to Undertow, the standalone expansion to the award-winning Too Many Bones, featuring two brand new gear locks, all new encounters, tyrants, baddies, and the same brain-bending cooperative challenges and clever dice mechanics as the original. Undertow is the ideal entry point to the world of Daylor, as well as uh, a massive expansion for owners of the original game. You'll need every bit of your wits and a bit of luck to survive this journey. Don't get pulled under. So for me, this is a new series for me as well, so... This is essentially where I'll be jumping into and doing some gameplay of this of this game, and then hopefully when I get access to the core game, I will then um, do an unboxing and some playthroughs of that, uh, using also some of the other expansion things I get. So we'll open up the box. Ooh, my first time unboxing it myself. So we have got here our rule book. So our credits on the back. I'll not bore you with the, the details of the rulebook, but you have the, your rulebook there. Some nice artwork and all that stuff, so I'll be having a good read of that later on. Uh, we've also got uh, a Chip Theory catalog book from the makers of the game, Chip Theory. And we've got, we've got loads of die, or loads of dice rather, I should say. Lots of, lots of lovely dice. And they're little dice trays that when you take the lid off, um, they essentially turn into an extra dice tray, so that's always really handy. So you have places to actually set up your um, your dice, and there's another another set uh, another set here. Uh, we'll leave the cards to last. So we've got oh heavy, lots of chips, lots and lots of chips which is what this game and chip theory uh, specialize in. Nice weight to them as well. So lots of chips. And then we've got our health chips and our turn order, I believe, from things I've seen of the game and stuff, turn order chips. More dice, attack die and more ability dies and things. So first of all, maybe I'll give you a good, good view of these mats. We've got Duster, one of the new characters from the game. Got a nice wolf there. The mats are really nice detail. A nice bright color to them. All her abilities and health and stuff. Nothing on the back. We've then got Stanza, who's a musician. Looking really, really cool. I like the the different color trims to the boards. And then we've got our battle boards. So we've got a, a raft in the middle of the water. And then we've got like out in the, the forest or the, the plains or just on the island with your initiative uh, tracker there, meter. Really cool, really nice, really well, really well made and they feel really nice. And then underneath was 
the uh, reference sheets. Oh, these are made out of a uh, nice plastic. So they're really good quality. So your, your duster sheet, you've got stanza, double sided, just to tell you how that particular character works and how their skills work. And then we got their adventure guide, giving you a breakdown of uh, how to play the game, what the structure of the game, and you know different uh, skills and what they mean and stuff, and battle sequences in order and stuff. So just something to to always uh, know. But now this was interesting. Once I lifted those out. Hidden at the bottom of the box was a loot card. Oh, I don't know if that was a legendary item, if I should have revealed that or not. So, um, but yeah, we've got the uh, Mechalabash pipe, two uses. Nice hidden loot card underneath everything else. That's quite cool, like when games do that, hide things. So now we've got, we'll look into our, our card decks, which are also really, really well presented. Like I love everything about this game so far and how it's just been presented and how it's been organized. Everything just will fit neatly back into the box. Um, just so well made. It's one of the things that can be a gripe with board games is once you punched everything out, you've got nowhere for it to go. It's just a big mess in a box. So they've really, really thought this through. So I'll not, I'll not open these just yet, but I'll just give you a quick overview of these and a counter card campaign rewards in this deck so you get one big deck of cards in this little tuck box and then in this tuck box it looks like more of we oh, we've got campaign cards and loot cards so that's nice so yeah so that's everything that you get in the under two box so uh, let's jump into the next one next up we have 40 days in day lore additional baddies and counters for too many bones so we'll take a look at the back. Uh, every day is a new adventure. 40 Days in Daylor introduces 24 general, 12 solo, and 4 tyrant special, usable in both general and solo play, brand new encounters, along with 15 unique baddies to bolster the enemy ranks and too many bones. New stories, new headaches, and new body skills which surprise you at every turn. Designed to make you think, laugh, and even occasionally test your dexterity, 40 Days in Daylor is a collection of content that will add near infinite replayability to too many bones. Now, I can't, as far as I'm aware, I might have to go double check this, but... It may work with Undertow, but this was originally designed before uh, Undertow came out, so not too sure how much of this, if any, will be compatible with Undertow, but it doesn't matter. I'm just happy enough to, to have it now ready, so whenever I do get the, the core game, I can then just use this extra content to have more replayability and a lot new adventures. So this is what's inside. We've got our deck of cards. We've got our chips. Get rid of that. We don't need that. Underneath... We have our body skills in terms. Obviously, they'll have new, there'll be new skills and what they mean for the new bodies, new encounter things. So just an extra breakdown of some of the new cards and icon, uh, iconography and stuff that you'll get. So let's have a look at these chips in this little tub. It's a nice little display tub. We'll have a wee look at the first one there. We've got the Troll Brewmaster. Pretty cool. So I don't want to spoil anything, so that's why I'm just. I know it's it's an unboxing, but I don't want to. I don't want to spoil things. I want to keep everything a surprise for people. I just want to give a quick brief, like I said, overview of what you do get inside each uh, each thing. Maybe that's maybe not the best way to describe an unboxing, but it's. I think it's nice to give people not give away every detail. It's just nice to quickly show what's what's inside, and then there we've got more encounter cards inside the tuck box to add to the game. There's slap happy there. You can pause it and have a read of what that is and goes inside this tuck box. So, so yeah, so that's a pretty pretty quick quick overview of what you get in the uh, 40 days in, in day lore. Put that back in there. It's very nicely presented. So we'll jump into the next one. So we have the Age of Tyranny campaign components for too many bones. Now again, I probably won't be able to use this necessarily with uh, Undertow, but um, it's the campaign mode essentially for too many bones. Uh, darkness looms over Daylor. Seven tyrants have invaded to subdue and terrorize the land, causing the Gearlock race to retreat from the deep wood to safety behind uh, Obendar's city walls. The Gearlock council is demanding the tyrants be dealt with. The journey will be arduous and full of trials and battles that may permanently scar you and render go-to strategies unusable. 
Track your success between games with the new snaps, uh, snapshot mat. Add infinite variety to your journey with new day, one to three encounters, and wrestle with campaign cards and scars, shaping every game in a unique way. Aid your tyranny will breathe new excitement and challenge into your adventures through day lore. So, the campaign mode. Let's open it up and see what we've got inside. Okay, so we've got in here in our little. Oh, we got some die or dice. Some nice die there. And then we've got these, which I believe are the these, are either scar dice or the tracking dice. Oh, and little chips in there as well. Well, they're not dice, they're actual markers, tokens rather. We have a deck of cards. The more campaign esque cards. Oh, there's two sets of cards in here. So we've got the scar cards. Boom. And then we've got uh, Epilogue Duster. Okay, so maybe it can be used with Undertoads. Duster was in the arts, just giving you some hints towards her character. So, different epilogues and different uh, endings, I suppose. But every time you play it, you'll, have, you'll draw different cards and you get different endings. So. And then here we have the snapshot map for the campaign. Open that up. Okay, so loot and scars. We'll all go down this side. Defeated tyrants. Um, some of those where you track your progress for your current gear lock, their health, dexterity, attack, defense, and then all the, the tyrants you defeated. So that's a really cool thing to add. Like I love with board games is campaigns and being able to track my progress. I wouldn't necessarily be one to one shot things. I'd want to have it be a continuous uh, adventure over either a couple of play sessions or in one long day. So this is a cool way just to keep track of where you've you've got to and to give you a goal that you want to fill this with all tyrants so i thought that was a it's a really cool addition to to the game and then here's the uh the rules how to use the campaign mode campaign rules rules continued miscellaneous how the dice work uh the counters the boons the scars and what comes in the comes in the game the scar tokens that's what these these are the scar tokens and you have boon and scar cards and stuff so really cool so i can't wait to actually get too many bones itself and actually use this to track the campaign so what i'll probably do is just with undertow whenever i get around to playing that is just do some uh playthroughs of that and then whenever i get too many bones i'll do a proper playthrough of the campaign mode so that will be good so now we'll move on to the actual gear lock expansions and see what other new actual characters we'll be able to get to uh to adventure with okay so first up we've got tink the bot builder uh, experience the power of Gearlock Engineering. Tink might look like a slouch in the attack and defense department, but that's before his enemies feel the wrath of his spider bot. Use his superior bot builder and accessorizer professions to construct powerful technology and throw a wrench in the Ebon's plans, literally. A mechanist, a mechanist skill uh, allows Tink to stay safely in the back while his creations do the heavy lifting. You know what they say, brains before brawn. Or was it bots before brawn? So we've got a, a tinker here, uh, a, an engineer for the game, which will rely heavily on his companions to actually um, do battle while he sits in the in the back line. So here we have Tink's uh, attack die. Open these up so we can have a look at them. I'm actually struggling here in the front. There we go. So there we have Tink's uh, attack die. And there's his chip. Beautiful chip. Bring that aside. Some quick close up of some of the die here. Ooh. Really cool. Really, really, really cool. Again, just always really well presented and organized. Take that off. And here we have his, his player map. Again, nice color orange to signify him. Nice design. Got all his skills there. Air horn, armor plating, protect mode, build, uh, initiate, spider bot 1.0, spider bot 2.0, Jericho, Gatling, so the different versions of his, of his bots and things. 
And then we have his reference card, giving a breakdown of how he works and how his, his skills work and his bots work. So there we go. And to go along with him, because he has the uh, dice, I believe, in here for his, uh, his bots, but I bought the uh, ally add-on, which works with, with Tink. I'll open this up now. But it also works uh, with Gilly. Uh, the next one we shall be looking at. So I'll keep those off to the side. So here you can actually see the companions actually have their own chips now, which is a lot cooler of an addition than actually the, having the, the weight of the chip there and the, the, a nice the art so you can see the, the different levels when you uh, upgrade uh, his robot. So that is, that is Tink. We shall move on to the next one. Okay, so next we have Gilly the Scoutmaster. Uh, always on scouting duty. Gilly brings valuable skills to any adventure. Not only can you gather intel on what lies ahead, you can also lay traps before the next battle begins. It, uh, if your snares are not enough to give you a winning edge over your enemies, Gilly can call for some assistance from various beasts in the wild and command them to join the fray. Long on range and short on defense, Gilly relies on his ranger and marksman professions to control and eliminate more aggressive enemies. So we've got the, a long distance, and he's missing a leg there, uh, character. He will rely on his range, but also again his companions, much like uh, Tink. So here we have Gilly's dice and his, and his chip. And move that over to one side. Really nice look at his chip. Beautiful, really good art, nice shine to it and that, same with his dice, really well made. And then just while on the subject of that, I can then show you um, his companions. So he has uh, Growl's companion, a nice lion. We've got Lil Yeti companion, it's a bear. And then we've got Talon companion, we've got a hawk, so that's really cool uh, to have the chips then of his companions as well. And just put those in his his uh, little chip box to keep them safe. So I'm going to move into his player board. I think so far out of all the characters, Gilly definitely is the one I like the most from just his, his art style and um, just from looking at his general just aesthetic and his skills and how he is. He's an archer, he's ranged, and I love uh, range characters in games, I love bow and arrows and things, so he just basically is just my, the perfect character um, for me to, to play, so I'll probably be using Gilly quite a lot when playing this game, but yep, here we have a look at Gilly's uh, player board, <clears throat> it's his health and attack, scout, scout master, here's how you will call all his uh, companions, multi-arrow and stuff, his traps and things, and then we have his, his skill sheet, so how to use him, what his icons mean, how to use his companions, and then just a breakdown of what the bones do, extra details, and sort of beginner builds and things, and a bit more, a bit more blurred on how and who and what he is. Oh, and it and it gives you a difficulty. So in co-op and solo, how easy he is to play or whatever, which is also very cool. It's nice to know, you know, when you're about to change, maybe try a different card. Do you want something that was a bit too easy to play? You want something a bit more complex? So now you can know with this just which character is uh, more complex to play. So we'll move on to the next one. Okay, so next up we have Nugget, the treasure hunter. Okay, look at the back. Uh, Nugget has an insatiable thirst for adventure. Her skills range from boons that last the entire battle to unique ways of acquiring the best loot Daylor has to offer. More nimble than her fellow Gearlocks, Nugget's high initiative and initiative modification skills allow her to strive, uh, strike early and often. The gifted and key master professions allow players to take a rule first strategize uh, later approach to her battles. As one of the only melee range gearlocks, Nugget is also perfect, uh, a perfect hybrid for your next solo adventure. So again, a character that's up close and personal and will be best for solo play so you can just get straight in there and wreck some, some baddies. So yeah, here we have her dice and her, her chip. Nice look at those. Again, beautifully designed chip, nice colours as always. It's just one of the things that's so vibrant and colourful, it just draws your eye right in to want to play the game just to roll the lovely coloured dice. And then we'll get to her, get to her player mat. Have a quick nosy edit.
Again, just beautifully designed, well laid out. I just love looking at everyone's different skill trees, seeing what way I can level it up, what way they work, where they go, and the artwork and stuff. Just it's, they're just beautiful, well designed mats, and it's just it's it's just such a gorgeous game to look at. Just just owning it for me is just, is enough. Just I'm obviously going to play play loads and loads and loads of this game. I cannot wait. But it's just from an art standpoint and a design standpoint, the game is absolutely gorgeous and beautiful and really well designed. Um, I'll have a quick nosy at her. Skill sheet, so yeah, if you look at Gilly, he was a 3 for difficulty in co-op, and now she's only a 2, and a 2 for solo as well, so uh, a good card to play maybe on your own, if you're playing on your own, which I, I probably will do a solo playthrough, but I'll also do a 2-player playthrough where I'll control 2, two gear locks, so I'll sort of change it up. So yeah, that is Nugget the Treasure Hunter. We've got one left to look at, and we shall move on to that right now. Right, on to the final box, the final gear lock, and that is Gasket, the Hydromech. Uh, such a, a cool and different, already unique uh, gear lock uh, compared to all the rest. Obviously, you will assume that there is a natural gear lock inside this mech, and then again, maybe he's not. Um, so we will, well, he is a, we'll, we'll read and see. Built as a personal sentry to Mira Watt near the break in Southern Daylor, this hydropower steambot uh, steam is a powerful ally to the Gearlock cause. So it mustn't be someone inside it, it actually is a robot. Uh, manage gas its hydro level to launch attacks at bat all battle long, or use it all at once for an unstoppable barrage. Activate derail mode to rearrange and destroy baddies at will, or try your hand at performing with Gastic's directives. Gastic introduced a new brand of steam-powered excitement to the Too Many Bones universe. So a completely different type of character to play with completely different mechanics compared to all the rest of the of the gear locks that we've previously seen. And that's not obviously including the four gear locks you get in the um oops, knocked you there a wee second there. Uh, the original game. Four game. So there is Gasket's dice. And his chip. Really, really nice. And we'll have a look underneath. Oh, his reference sheet first this time so we'll have a look at that first since it was it was added first difficulty all your iconography all his his moves and how they work and then more brett down of his actual details and things and what he does and then for that, the last the last player mat to look at so you have an idea of what you get in each box and how it looks you can obviously, like I said, you can pause any of these videos you've seen to get a more in-depth detail of what you've wanted to see if they look like they're worth your time in purchasing. And so here we have Gasket, beautiful art on that mech. I love my steampunk mech sort of um, artwork and design and style. So he's just a, another one I'll probably use quite a lot. And he's got a very unique, uh, from what I was reading there, uh, play style compared to the rest as well, uh, using his hydro level. So that's going to be real fun to get used to. Um... So yeah, that is Gasket. That is all the expansions for Too Many Bones. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing video. I know it was a, a brief showcase. I didn't go into too much depth because I'm personally myself new to the game and I also didn't want to spoil a lot of things. Um, uh, in future box unbox unboxings, I will probably go in more depth with things, but this, this is the first one. I just wanted to give a quick overview of uh, all the components because it's one of those games that you'd rather just jump straight into and play. You maybe just want to have a quick nose at what you get in the box, have a quick pause of the video just to read a few things that you just wanted to make sure if it felt right getting or not. Um, but, oh yeah, one more thing. Actually, I forgot. Completely forgot. And it was staring at me right, me in the, staring right at me in the face. So I can just quickly show you it now. How could I forget? Is the optional for the main game uh, the adventure map? Because when you play the original game, you just get a card and you have your time token which goes in here and you just spit it on the card, you just spin it. You don't really have any visual representation of where you're going, you just have how many days you spent. So having the actual adventure map and the, just to see the world of, the, of where the gearlocks live and stuff is just an, a, a nice add on to the game. I think it makes it just more immersive and stand out more, you actually get to see where you're traveling to. And the good thing with this is it's double-sided, so this is the core game for Too Many Bones, but then when you flip it over, you then have your undertow side, which is beautiful. I love the look of this side and stuff, which is the side I shall be playing on. You'll see it quite a lot when I do do my videos. So you have your where we start, up in Obendar, and then you have your, your days, you have your tyrant markers, where they will spawn. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, and don't be afraid to leave a like, and get ready to see more videos in the future. Goodbye.